Dr. Tadamitsu Kishimoto was born in 1939 in Osaka, Japan. Being an only child, he was much loved by his parents. When he was three years old, he amazed people around him by reciting Buddhist sutras that his grandfather chanted every day. It seems he was gifted with a good memory from a very early age. In 1958, he entered Osaka University to study medicine. Meanwhile, Dr. Kishimoto's future research partner, Dr. Toshio Hirano, was born in 1947, also in Osaka. Although his father was very strict, he was also an affectionate father who took Toshio to the park every Sunday. Here, Toshio was having fun posing as a bike rider. He had a sensitive character and used to get sick easily. On top of that, his father was a doctor. So it was only natural that he pursued medicine. In 1966, he entered Osaka University to study in the Faculty of Medicine. Although Dr. Kishimoto had already graduated from Osaka University by this time, Dr. Hirano was greatly inspired by the lectures by Professor Yuichi Yamamura, who used to mentor Dr. Kishimoto as well. Professor Yamamura always made his students think about the cause of illnesses. This approach to thinking about the essence of things influenced Dr. Kishimoto and Dr. Hirano and steered them toward basic medical science. In 1970, Dr. Kishimoto moved to Baltimore, Maryland, in the United States, to study immunology at Johns Hopkins University under Professor Kimishige Ishizaka. In 1973, Dr. Hirano also moved to Baltimore to study at the National Institutes of Health, and here the doctors finally met. Their future partners. When Dr. Hirano arrived in Baltimore, it was Dr. Kishimoto that picked him up from the airport. Ever since then, the families of both doctors had become close as well. Around this time, there was a big movement in the field of immunology. Including Dr. Kishimoto and Dr. Hirano, researchers around the world were racing to advance the research on interleukins, which are proteins that play a major role in the immune system. In order to further his research, Dr. Kishimoto moved to the Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York. Dr. Kishimoto stayed at the home of Center President Dr. Robert Good and continued his research night and day. And it was here that he finally discovered a candidate for a new type of interleukin. In 1976, Dr. Hirano returned to Japan and started working for Osaka Prefectural Habikino Hospital. After that, He joined Kumamoto University as an assistant professor, where he continued to do research on his own. And after eight years, he discovered the existence of interleukin. Both doctors made their groundbreaking discoveries separately, but this was only the beginning of the real research that would follow. Back then, the academic world was just starting to recognize new substances through successful cloning. The process of isolating individual genes. It was around this time that the Institute for Molecular and Cellular Biology was established by Osaka University to further bioscience research. Dr. Kishimoto, who became a professor there, invited Dr. Hirano. The two began their search for the interleukin genes. Despite the long years of effort, attaining success wasn't easy. For years and years, they had to patiently undertake experiments. Dr. Hirano describes this period of his career as darkness in which the only way to move forward was to believe in myself. And after a lot of time and effort, the doctor suddenly reached the light at the end of the tunnel. In May 1986, they succeeded in confirming the existence of interleukin 6. The doctors poured beer over each other at the summer camp. And celebrated their success. They were so thrilled that they even jumped into a swimming pool with their clothes on. 
In 1988, the substance cloned by the doctors was named interleukin-6 at an international conference. The two doctors attracted a great deal of attention from academic circles when their publication made it into the list of the top 10 cited papers. In 1997, Dr. Kishimoto became the president of Osaka University, and the year after, he was awarded the Order of Culture by His Majesty the Emperor. Meanwhile, Dr. Hirano in 2004 won the Fujihara Prize, and in 2006, was awarded the Emperor's Purple Ribbon Medal, which he celebrated with his wife, who supported him over the years. In 2009, the doctors became the first Japanese to be awarded the Crayford Prize by the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. Even after retiring from Osaka University as its president, Dr. Kishimoto continues to dedicate his life to research with aspiring young researchers. Today, therapeutic medicine for diseases like rheumatoid arthritis has become widely available because of what Dr. Kishimoto achieved. It is Dr. Kishimoto's dream to eliminate the need for wheelchairs among rheumatoid arthritis patients. Today, Dr. Hirano is a professor at the University of Osaka, where he passionately teaches his juniors. On his laboratory desk, you can still find a memo with a message from his former teacher, Professor Yamamura. When research is pursued with steadiness and persistence, one will come across a great outcome when least expected. My motto is, continuance leads to creation. Medical research that's true to the essence will always contribute towards diagnosis and treatment of diseases in the end. A climber can find out the height of the mountain and the progress of ascent. A researcher, however, has no way of knowing the height of their mountain or the progress of ascent until the top is reached. For us researchers, it is very important to reach the top of the mountain we are on. Because it is only when you are at the top you get to see a new landscape.